moment when the preacher found it difficult um, to preach because the presence and the glory of the Lord is, is already here. You will not miss your portion this morning in the name of Jesus. The glory of God is already here with us. I mean, if you can feel God's presence, it's already here. Okay. You will not miss your encounter in the name of Jesus. Well, it's two in one this morning. We are rounding up uh, the power conference. But it's also the day two of our missions week. So I will attempt to move very qu quickly because um, we must finish first service in time for second service to, to resume. But all that God wants to say to us this morning, I'm praying for you one more time that you will not miss your portion in the name of Jesus. The theme for the month of May has been long life, and I want to pray one more time, according to the word of God, with long life, the Lord will satisfy each and every one of us. In the mighty name of Jesus, if anyone be marked with any mark of death, the blood of Jesus wipe it off now. In the mighty name of Jesus, on this Pentecostal Sunday, because today is Pentecost, <laughs> The power of the Holy Ghost will uproot everything that is not of God. In the name of Jesus. I've never preached a message so titled the topic that God has given us this morning. But the topic for the message is Long Service, Long Service Award. <laughs> Long Service Award. I've known that from my HR but I've never preached a message titled Long Service Award. I think God is about to reward someone. It will be a generous reward in the name of Jesus. Genesis 15, verse 15. Genesis 15, verse 15. Now, as for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried at a good old age. I believe that is for me. Now, if it is for you, your amen will have been a louder amen. Listen, brethren, although every employment, employment letter, lists out the benefits, no one is hired to receive benefits. You are hired to do a job. The tragedy of the 21st century Christianity is that many believe that we are saved to receive benefits. But that's far from the truth. Whenever anyone is hired... There is a job description, key performance indicators, and then the benefits. The job description of every Christian is simple. It is evangelism, missions, and outreaches. You can call it EMO if you like. And I have many proofs and evidences from scriptures. Matthew 4, 18 and 19, for example. Matthew 4, 18 and 19. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren... Simon called Peter and Andrew's brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. Verse 19. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. The only reason we are not taken to heaven the day we, have, we gave our life to Christ is because there's work to do. It's because the Lord wants us to reach out to the lost. So they could be brought into the kingdom of God. Matthew 15, 14, 15 and 16. Matthew 15, 14 to 16. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven, after resurrection now, as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Brethren, we are saved to serve. We are saved to win souls, period. Now, if you don't know your job description, you are not going to last long on the job. If you don't know your key performance indicators, you will be rated poorly and may be fired very soon. A gate man who leaves the gate to join the office cleaners to clean the office, we soon be fired. For he was, he was not hired to clean the office, but to watch the gate. It does not matter how well he joined in the cleaning. 
of the office. He might even be the best cleaner. But he wasn't hired to clean the office. He was hired to watch the gate. He would be fired still. There are many believers who are doing several other things. But have neglected the real job that the master had given to us. Every employer has a reason for recruitment. And Jesus is not different in his approach to recruitment. In Matthew 9, verse 37, Matthew 9, 37, then he said to the disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of harvest to send out laborers into his, into his harvest. Jesus is deliberate, intentional. The kingdom of God is deliberate, intentional to recruit us, save our souls. That we face the primary responsibility of evangelism, missions, and outreaches. If you are saved already, then you are saved to serve. And the service is soul winning through evangelism, missions, and outreaches. That's the job description, period. Every other thing you do is secondary. The gate man may do other things for as long as he's watching the gate. But to abandon the primary thing, to do the secondary thing, you are likely to be fired very soon. Job description defines what you do day to day. Your key performance indicator specifies the goals by which your performance is, is appraised. I, I, I've given us the job description. It is to evangelize. It is for outreaches. It is for missions. But there will be key performance indicators, the things that will measure how well we have done. And I found it in Matthew 25, 34 to 40. We'd like to read it from the New Living Translation. Matthew 25, 35 to 34 to 40. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? Or a stranger and show you hospitality? Or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? Then the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to the one of the least of these of my brothers and sisters, you are doing it to me. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, the redeemed of the Lord, we can see clearly that the key performance indicators for every believer will be based on how many lives you have impacted for Jesus, period. Missions and outreaches in the name of the Lord for the purpose of winning souls for Christ is the key performance indicators. And this could be foreign mission or local mission. Let me break down the KPIs, the key performance indicators that I just read now, into its components where I was trying to evaluate the king's palace as a church and then individuals because we are the church. Look at 36a, Matthew 25, 36a, Matthew 25, 35a, I meant to say. For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I said, glory be to God. We have the full distribution ministry. It's also called the body bearer ministry. By the grace of God, the pantry is open even now almost every day. People come in to get food. Every Friday, the line is long. People come in to collect food. One Saturday is a mega distribution. The point or the question is, however, <laughs> are you part of that? Maybe you are not part of that. You are part of something else. Let's look at the next one. Matthew 25, 35b to 36. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. That speaks to the King's Touch ministry, the homeless ministry. I remember before COVID when we would bring them, you know, to church, many of them had not combed their hair in a long time. The brethren, we helped them to have hair cut. I mean, some of, the, some of them had been taken to homes to go and shower because they are just not, you know, smelling nice. This is what Jesus is talking about. But there are even many brethren out there 
who are stranded, looking for who to help them. I've told you many, many stories of our brethren who are now very established in, in America that I never met before until the first time they asked that they, will, they were looking for a place to stay. And I called my wife that I found somebody, a Christian, they are moving to the U.S., they don't have a place to stay, I think we can accommodate them. My wife says, oh yeah, if you, have, if you, if you feel like that, and they will come. In fact, there was a time when two families met themselves. The timing was <laughs> must be aligned, and the two families came at the same time. And we were all there in the house with their children. These days, people are stingy, self-centered, focused only on themselves. There are even people that have three to four unused bedrooms in their homes. Yet, there are people that are stranded who are believers. Jesus says, I will measure your assessment, your performance, by asking the question, I was a stranger, but you couldn't take me in. I was naked. You gave me clothing. Some people, one of the reasons they are late Sunday morning is that it would take them like 15 minutes to choose which dress to wear because there are just too many. Shoes everywhere. You get to some closet, you think it's a boutique where they sell shoes. All manner of color, all manner of types. But they look around the church, they found a particular brother or sister, it's only one shoe. They say, well, she must be lazy, let her go and walk. But the OKPI okay is right in there, key performance indicator. Jesus is going to ask the question. Let us stop being stingy. Let us stop being self-centered. And look around us, you will discover how many people need what you have. Number three, Matthew 25, 36, he said, I was sick and you cared for me. Well, I don't know how well help and healing ministry is doing these days. But we have a ministry that we go to the home people's home. They will go in the morning and see the elderly people and minister to them, preach to them, pray for them. If it was their birthday, they will get cakes and things like that and give to them. They had two homes at the time. I've not getting the latest update. But if they have stopped, they better resume because you are failing. If God comes and says, hey, I was sick. You didn't care for me. You can say, I care. <laughs> I went to the old people's home. But we can even take it beyond the old people's home and expand this health ministry to even going to some hospital. Some of us have to become chaplains so that we can have the opportunity to enter the hospital in the U.S. because you can't just go there without certain, certain licensing because Jesus is going to ask this question. What about 36C? Matthew 25, 36C. Say, I was in prison and you visited me. Wow. That talks about the King's Justice Ministry. And they, they still went to the prison to go and visit. I think it was yesterday I saw a report. that they, Was it yesterday? I, I, saw, I saw a report that they went to the prison to see. We have a prison ministry that is going on. Matthew 15, verse 15. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That talks about health ministry. Because when we, we are going to Brazil now, as we go to Brazil on mission, we are going with health ministry, sports ministry, drama ministry, teaching ministry, music ministry, media ministry, the outreach churches. This is what it takes to pass when Jesus will come. Revival moves. End time revival is here. We have been having midnight cry for revival every single day. It's going to be three years on August 38th. Some have never attended once. Now that God is bringing revival to Houston, you know, that the is coming, God put it in the heart of someone to call for a revival meeting because there's a prophecy over Houston that the next move of God in revival will be in Houston. Oh, yes. If you are saying amen, say it very loud. Amen. Now, and we have been praying. And so somebody who didn't know that the Jew closely reached out and daddy agreed daddy doesn't go anywhere except god asked him to go now we are trying to i was asking the head usher now that how many of your ushers will be participating at, at the meeting i said only three of them i said three when whatever is about to happen I said maybe they are working all this work we have been doing we can't even prioritize where this work has not made anybody to pay one million dollar tight in this place many of the work is not even getting you anywhere why don't you invest a little bit in the kingdom of God and check him out? Revival is about to happen. It is not the man's project. 
It is kingdom project and every one of us must be alive to what God is about to do and get involved. I mean, I have meetings regarding that program every Monday. We gather, we discuss. In the course of the week, you know, I took senior pastors in the city out to sit down and see how we can help senior pastors of Redeem. Don't, be a, don't sleep at this time. Be awake. This dollar, 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 dollar has made people to forget the real principal reason why Christ saved your soul. The question is, in all that I've mentioned, are you involved in any of this? In your giving, in your groaning, in your going. Some can go, all right. I mean, many of us are going to, 17 of us are going to Brazil. Many of those people will take time off work. Some will not be paid for those days they are out. Yet they bought their own ticket themselves. So they are traveling. They bought their ticket by themselves. But you are here. All right, maybe you can't go legitimately. What about giving the equivalent of your ticket or half of the tickets? I can't go. I wish I could go. The, the parish we are planting is costing $14,000. Pastor Guna, right? $14,000 is the amount of money we have not raised one offering here about it. Now you cannot go. What about giving money towards the church planting? By the way, Greenhouse, hear me help. The name of the parish we are planting in Brazil is Dominion. It's Dominion Parish. Well, that calls for a clap, but it also calls for your responsibility because now the church is named after your house. <laughs> Glory be to God. Okay, but the point I'm making is have you even offered a single prayer that my brethren are going to Brazil? Ah, let me be praying for them. What are you going to do? What exactly are you going to do? Are you only saved to come to church and warm the bench? You look at the chair and say, oh, they didn't clean this chair well. You just sit down. After service, you go. When Christ will come, he will ask you these same questions. Will you pass? Will you fail? I need to round up now. My time, the time is up. But here is where I'm going. I can't roll my slides. But let me say to you that for every employment, there are compensations and benefits in every work. Hebrews 6.10, for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed towards his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and to minister. Galatians 6.7, Galatians 6 and be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man swear, the same shall he reap. There are compensations. And I know a bit of HR. I could say I'm an expert. That is what is called the Long Service Award. The Long Service Award is an integral element of employees' recognition programs and it help employers to recognize and appreciate long service employees. So when God showed up before Abraham, say, man, you have tried. I call you, you obey. Your, your nephew was in trouble, you, you, you went after to say you interceded for Sodom and Gomorrah. I ask you to sacrifice your only son. You are willing to do so. I will reward you with a long service award. So he showed up to him and said, you will go to your father's in peace. He said, you will enjoy long life. You will live long. Let me tell you the truth. God is a great investor. Laborers are few. Why will you kill the few ones? When somebody serving the Lord goes home early, he has either finished his job like Stephen, in which case there is no reason for him to stay back, or maybe an evil was waiting that he will not escape from before, before, before the evil day. The righteous is taken away. Otherwise, God needs those who are serving him here very long. And that's why he said, with long life, will I satisfy you? I call it long service award. If I were to have time, I will have told you about the decorations that comes. Because in those long service award, oh, I think 20 years when we were, when we were storm a jail, 25 years was Rolex wristwatch. Something that lasts long. If you have done only five years, they give you a pin. Some of you have only been serving God only three years. Now, you better enjoy a double up, double up, double up, double up. But the real long service award is eternity with him. 
Nothing is longer than that. Can we rise up? Let's rise up. If you are clapping for the Lord, let's clap for him. Let's clap for him. I want you to make a commitment this morning. You see, you cannot give what you don't have. He first chose the people to be with him before he decides to send them out. Are you in Christ or you are just in church? It's not enough to be in Christ. You must be in, to be in church. You must be in Christ. Many are in church but not in Christ. So I call you this morning if you are not in Christ to come to Christ. It's so sweet to be in Christ. But if you are already in Christ, then you must make a commitment and do the job. You are saved to serve. And he's going to ask you what you have done concerning evangelism, concerning missions, concerning outreaches. So those who are not giving their life to Jesus Christ, whether you're in the virtual church or here, and you want to do so, then just wave your hand to the Lord. But those I really, really want to pray for, in addition this morning, are those who are saying, wow, I've had this word. I will commit to this purpose. Oh, we are going to Brazil. Oh, I will give for Brazil. I'm not going to make a, a public a public offering for this. I just want to propose in your heart before you leave here or before we travel to Brazil. Church planting costs fourteen thousand dollars. The outreaches will cost about another seven thousand dollars. The budget is about twenty five thousand dollars without those who have already paid for their thing. Those who, the, 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 the revival meeting in Houston is costing money. Us. We are going to be supporting that ministry that the Lord is using. What are you going to do? All these outreaches, food distribution, the homeless ministry, which one are you going to do out of this? Because God, Jesus is coming soon and he will ask you. So if you want to commit to God, not to man, not to me, not to the church, wave your hand up. I need God's help. I need to be part of this. Just raise your hand up so I can pray for you that God will grant you grace. As many as wants to make those commitments, show, show, show by raising your hands up so I can pray for you that God will help you. God will help you. Lift your hands up if you want to. Then just raise your hand. I just want to pray for you. I don't know how, what you want to do, but you know what to do. Commit to God. Speak in one minute to God what you want to do. Just tell him. Let him hear you. Say, Lord, this is what I plan to do as you help me. My Lord and my God, I pray for all your children who have had this word and who are making commitment to you, not to any man. My Lord and my God, please help them in the name of Jesus. Whatever commitment they are making, everything they need to fulfill the commitment, please give to them in the name of Jesus. Some of them may not even have what it takes now. But because they are making this commitment, this week, make a way for them in the mighty name of Jesus. And those who are not awake to this reality, wake them up from their slumber in the mighty name of Jesus. And for as many as will be giving their life to Christ now or who will hear this message after, Holy Spirit, minister to them until they submit to the Lordship of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. Blessed be your name, O God. Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And now go ahead, give the Lord a big hand. And then you may be seated.